They're going about their sluggy life. They're going to poop slug poop in my soil. And they're going to fertilize my soil with slug poop. So I'm totally fine with that. Um, every year I have slugs in my potatoes. Every year I don't care. Every year I get lots of potatoes. <laughs> it works out just fine. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com. I'm just out here early in the morning at dawn and uh, having a look at the slug situation and I thought I'd make a video here talking about slugs and encouraging you to think about if you're seeing slugs in your garden asking yourself what are they doing and is it a problem okay so we see slugs are like oh my god I have slugs I have to eradicate them and there are situations where that's the case where they're going to be a problem and you have to find some way to to control them but sometimes they're not a problem at all now look at these lettuce. These lettuce are fully mature lettuce and there's slugs on them. But you'll notice most of the slug damage is on the lower leaves down here, right? And you get the odd slug that's sort of on the inner leaves like this one. But most of the, there's a snail right there. Most of the slugs and snails are on the outer lower leaves. Almost, it's pretty consistent. Outer lower leaf, right? If you look, right, you might see one up a little bit higher there. But generally speaking, the dam, and here's another, this looks like an upper leaf, but it's a lower leaf uh, snail there, right? Another snail, a slug over there, right? So there's slugs and snails all over the place on this lettuce. But the nice tight head that I'm going to harvest, right, is basically being left alone. It's these older leaves that they seem to want to get at. And that's fine by me because I don't want them. <laughs> okay, you know, as the as the plant grows, the the new foliage uh, outcompetes the old foliage to a certain extent, and also there's a bit of shade here, so this gives those those things a nice place to hide from their predators, right, birds and stuff like that. Um, so you know, I just cut that stuff away. Sure, it's some loss, but I'm totally. I mean, I'm not operating a market garden here. This is for my own consumption, right? But I mean, you know, look how. Look how nice shape that's in, right? It's in great shape, right? The outer leaves look, look awful. There's a little teeny tiny slug. I'm trying to pick those things out. Look at the size of that, right? It's smaller than a pea. Uh, I've got even smaller slugs than that here. But anyway, they're, they're all over the place. And I don't care that they're bothering this lettuce because, again, what are they doing and is it a problem? They're eating the lower leaves. Is it a problem? No, don't care, right? Here's a bed of potatoes. And uh, if you look closely at the leaves, I mean, it's early in the morning, this will change as the sun comes out. But there's, there's slugs all over the leaves, right? There's a slug there. There's a snail. There's a tiny, teeny tiny slug there. Right, there's, you know, teeny tiny slug there. Slug, 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 slug. There's slugs everywhere. Look at that teeny, teensy, I have a big finger, but that's a teensy, weensy slug, or a slug, right? Anyway, they're all over the place on the foliage of these potatoes. So what are they doing? They're eating some of my potato leaves. Do I care? No, I don't care, right? They're going about their sluggy life. They're going to poop slug poop in my soil, and they're going to fertilize my soil with slug poop. So I'm totally fine with that. Um, every year, I have slugs in my potatoes. Every year I don't care. Every year I get lots of potatoes. <laughs> it works out just fine, right? Here I've got a nice little bed of um, cabbage, and sure, they, there needs a little bit of weeding needs to be done here. I'll get around to that soon. But I just wanted to show you. Look at these nice, beautiful upper leaves, right? They're in great shape. I don't see any slugs out right now. I'm really not looking that hard, but look at the lower leaves. Here, I'll break this off. Look at that slug damage. The slugs are working on that. Right? But I don't care. <laughs> they can have it, <laughs> right? The main thing is, and the same with this one here. Look, you get nice, clean, beautiful leaves. And you got this lower leaf here that the slugs are working on. Right? A little bit shadier, a little safer spot. You know, it's, it's sort of touching the soil. Again, I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, are there slugs here in this bed? Yes. At this stage in the game, I don't care. When the cabbage were like an inch or two high, one slug could take out an entire plant. So, yeah, that's when I care, right? Um, but when they, once they get large like that, if they're spaced properly, I find the slugs usually just take the lower leaves. So, yeah, what are they doing? They're eating the lower leaves. Do I care? No. 
here's a here's a garlic bed, and uh, from time to time I'll see a slug or a snail on the uh, on the foliage. I can't really see any right now, um, but having been a gardener for quite some time, uh, I've never noticed slugs to take any real toll on garlic. Right? They they'll take a bite here or there, but they really don't go after it, and they don't seem to attack it when it's young either. So, yeah. What are they doing? They're eating some of the garlic leaves. Do I care? No. So it's not worth, you know, all these situations I'm showing you here are situations where you just have no reason to want to use any solution, whether that's picking them off or slug bait. Just leave, let them do their thing. I mean, they're almost as, in terms of their ability to work on decaying plant matter in the soil, they're almost as beneficial as worms, right? Because it's going in one end of them, coming out of the under, other end of them, more broken down so that the other organisms in the soil can, can work on it from that point onward, right? Um, you know, they, they break down a lot of uh, material in the garden, so they can be beneficial, um, you know, but they can be destructive as well, depends on the situation. Here's a nice bed of beets, right? Lots of beets, doing great. And if I look here, I don't know why they're on this piece of rhubarb. Look at them all over this rhubarb. <laughs> Snails everywhere. Right over there. See you later, guys. But yeah, if you look at this um, uh, beet greens, you can see some slugs, right? But uh, I've been growing beets. I mean, I love beets, and I grow them every year. And I never find slugs to be much of a problem. They'll take a bite. They'll do some damage. These are not, you know, perfect beet greens. Perfectly edible, but you wouldn't sell them in a grocery store or anything like that. But the damage snails and slugs do to beets, at least in my experience, I mean, I can only speak to my context and <clears throat> the varieties of slugs that I have here, they never seem to inhibit, you know, they never seem to decrease the beet's ability to grow, and gather sun, all that sort of stuff. I always get nice big beets. I mean, these ones are two inches in diameter already, and we're, we're just uh, late June here, right? That's, that's good for here, for where I am, right? So, you know, we... What was that? Is there an animal in there? There's a rabbit in there. You, they're a problem. There's a rabbit. That's definitely a problem. <laughs> oh, get out of here, man. Look at him. Little teeny tiny rabbit. I, I've been noticing some damage in my um, kale, and I knew it was a rat-sized rabbit. I've got a fence here, but little tiny ones the size of rats could get through. Anyway, rabbit's another whole nother problem. <laughs> different content, maybe different video. But yeah, I, I don't find, I mean, yeah, the, the foliage has the telltale signs of uh, slug damage. But like my potatoes, it doesn't seem to get in the way of the beets producing nice big beet roots. And it's the root that I'm after. I like the greens. And I got no problem uh, sharing a bit of my greens with a slug. All right, there's a slug there on it, right? They never seem to take destroy the plant. They never seem to knock it down. There's other plants they can destroy. Um, I never seem to have a problem with them with beets. The main situation where slugs can be a problem is if you're trying to get something to grow and it's germinating and it's just peeking out of the soil and the slug attacks it immediately when it's very, very young and they just take out, you know, the, the, most seeds, when the plant first starts to grow, it puts out two leaves. Those two leaves are the result of the energy in the seed. Their job is to get energy from the sun to provide energy to the plant. If those two leaves are damaged, there's no plant. If one of those leaves is damaged, um, there's a name like cotyledons, you know, the, the leaves that coddle the plant <laughs> is a way of remembering it. If one of those leaves is damaged, the plant will still survive, but you've basically just cut the energy. Think of it as a solar cell. Right, you're just taking half the energy away. So the plant's greatly set back if one of those are damaged. So when the plants are very, very young, that's when you really want to be worried about slug. Four things that slugs attack. And you can see this, um, this is a uh, bean garden, and there's some gaps, right? This row in particular doesn't seem to have as many beans as this row is pretty good, right? And I had to replant, right? So you can see you got a, f a first wave of bean here and I had to replant second wave bean, second wave bean, second wave bean, 
first way of being, <laughs> right? I had to replant because they were taken out. So this will all fall in eventually, right? But the first wave got taken out by slugs and they were taken out just when they emerged, almost, I mean, it's just the plant never had a chance, right? They might have taken out 20% of my beans and that's typical for planting beans, right? So how do you deal with that? And here's another kind of plant, uh, cucumber, right? So cucumber, squash, pumpkin, they're all the same in terms of their relationship with slugs. It's a good, good, good stage to show you this plant. So the cucumber and the squash and the pumpkin, they all put out first leaves, right? Those two leaves, and then second leaves and third and fourth and fifth. The first leaves are smooth. The second, third and fourth, the first two leaves are smooth. All the other leaves are sharp, thistly, spiny, spiky. And once the plant has grown a little bit, the stem becomes spiky and spiny as well. So when the plant first emerges, it is not slug proof and slugs can damage it. After it puts on the second and third uh, leaves, it becomes a slug proof plant. So if I see slugs in a garden that's got, you know, second, third, fourth leaf uh, on in terms of this whole family, cucumber, squash, pumpkin, I don't care. I just leave the slugs about their business. But when the plant is, when I put the seeds down, okay, what I do, this is what I do, you can do whatever you want. I put some slug bait down. I use this here stuff. Uh, the active ingredient is uh, ferric sodium EDTA, um, 6%, right? So it's a very low percentage of a, a combination of uh, iron and sodium that uh, the plant, the, the, the slug eats it, it gets an overdose of iron. It's actually the iron that toxic is toxic. It's not that iron is toxic. Uh, slugs need toxic. To, uh, slugs need iron to live. So do you and I. But there's an amount that's toxic for slugs, and there's an amount that's toxic for you and you and I. Right? So um, yeah, those those things break down. I mean, you have iron in your soil. You have uh, well, you put it another way, you have uh, compounds in your soil that have iron in them. You have compounds in your soil that have sodium in them, salts and stuff like that. Um, it breaks down, and you know it really. It, you're not using a lot, right? You're just using a tiny amount. That's what I use. I'm totally cool with using this product in my garden. I still consider this an organic garden, even though I'm using this particular pesticide, because I understand that the ingredients in it are relatively benign and break down into other things that are benign. So I don't worry about it. But you, you can pick them off. You can use beer traps. You can use the itemaceous earth. You can you know, uh, I would not waste your time with eggshells. If, if you're using eggshells and you think they've solved your slug and snail problem, uh, your problem has been solved by some other means. <laughs> uh, I've done many experiments, and you can look at a lot of experiments on YouTube. Um, eggshells really don't prevent slugs from <laughs> crossing barriers. A lot of the things that people think uh, prevent slugs don't. But diatomaceous earths can work. But the catch with diatomaceous earth is that it has to stay dry. Once it gets wet or rained on or damp, uh, the slug goes right over. It doesn't even phase it. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but where I live, it's, it's kind of damp, <laughs> right? I'm uh, about a 10 minute drive from the ocean. And, and that's only because of the way the roads are organized. You know, if I could drive in a straight line, it'd be less than five minutes in that direction. And there's even days I can smell the sea here. Anyway, suffice it to say, it is a dewy, foggy, misty, you know, placed, shrouded in morning mists. So uh, diatomaceous earth really isn't a great solution for me because it's always getting damp and I have to just reply it or reapply it almost every day. Uh, for every one of these plants, I put down about two or three little pellets next to, you know, I, ba I basically just put a line of pellets down the center and all the slugs that were in this bed feasted on that bait before the, these even germinated. And I basically knocked back the slug population. Um, now these are of a size. I don't, I don't need this stuff anymore, right? I don't, will not need it at all for the rest of the gardening season. So, you know, for growing, I've got to replant a couple over there. The, these were planted underneath a, a cover, so they're a bit warmer. So the, this soil is cooler. That's why there's two missing there. Uh, anyway, the point is, I don't need to use slug bait or anything else. So, I mean... All I really had to use was about a tablespoon of this stuff, right? And I will get a ridiculous amount of cucumbers that it doesn't look like much right now, but this will be a six foot high wall of cucumbers <laughs> in a month or so. Um, and all I needed to use was about a tablespoon of this stuff, 
which is uh, 6% um, of that kind of chemical compound. So that's what I use. And I do the same thing uh, for things like uh, uh, beans when you're planting them young. I, I forgot to put it down when I planted these, so they got decimated, right? Um, when I replanted, I put a little bit down by each, uh, by each, you know, where, where, I, where I reseeded, I put a little bit of this stuff down. Sure, you can pick the slugs off. But, you know, as you can see from this potato garden, look, look at the size. I mean, sure, I've got big ones, you know, that you know, what you could typically think of when you think of a slug and snail, but I have so many that are teensy, weensy, tiny, miny, right? They're so small. How on earth would I possibly, when you consider a garden on this scale, right? How on earth could I possibly stand? How many beer traps would I need, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I go, like I have a bed of kale like this, right? Look, think of all the places a slug can hide. If you have a tiny garden, sure, you can go up and meticulously pick them off. But when you look at the size of this garden, and you know, there's a number of things that uh, slugs and snails can be a problem for. And uh, I grow enough of those things that it's just not worth my while when I can just use, you know, for most of these things, like when these kale were tiny, Again, I put like a tablespoon of, of the slug bait down. And then once they get a certain height, like this here height, they really, uh, clearly this one, as you can see, is not rabbit proof. That little tiny bunny has been eating this one. <laughs> and this one. It's obvious. <laughs> Just the way it's chewed back. But uh, once they get to this size, right, the slugs only attack, like the other things I was showing, they, they attack the lower leaves. They, generally speaking, leave the upper ones alone, right? So I don't need to use the slug bait. And you notice in this kale garden, I've got them well spaced. These ones still need some thinning, uh, but these are nice and well spaced. They're like 12 inches, 16 inches apart, All right? That's a good spacing for kale. Uh, slugs and snails love kale, but if you can keep the plant, you know, smallish, or no, um, what am I trying to say? Slugs and snails love kale, but once the plant is larger, you know, these ones are, oh, they're almost a foot high now. They tend to just focus on the lower leaves and they leave the upper stuff alone. And the, the, not only that, but they focus on the lower leaves that have gone a bit ratty, like the ones you wouldn't eat anyway, right? They, they basically eat the, eat the stuff you wouldn't want. And they're turning that into slug manure, which is an excellent fertilizer. Uh, here's a squash plant, or a squash garden here where I've got squash. Now I plant them you know, in twos and threes and I have to thin these down, right? Because I got two growing here, but really there's only enough room for one. So I'll have to get rid of one, probably this one because it's a bit smaller. Uh, but when I first planted these, again, I put the slug bait down. And now I don't need it at all for the rest of the season, right? This garden's totally fine. I got to bring a mulch in here. You know, cut these down to just one plant per space and mulch the garden. Um, but I don't need any, I don't really need to worry about whatever the slugs are going to be doing in this bed from this point forward. I don't care what they're doing. <laughs> they're not going to bother my squash. They're going to leave them alone, right? Um, because generally speaking, uh, squash, if you, if you touch a squash leaf to your face, it has a prickly, thickle-like texture. doesn't feel good. And they must have just uh, adapted to grow that way to pr protect themselves from things like slugs. But those first two leaves, different texture, right? Soft and smooth and delicious, <laughs> right? Anyway, uh, just a, a short impromptu video. I don't even have my camera gear or tripod or anything like that. I was just out, uh, just taking a look around the garden. I like coming out early in the morning to sort of monitor things. And I noticed there was just slugs all over the place, but most of them were doing stuff I don't care about. So it, it prompted me to, to make this video and just a little quick conversation about slugs and snails and uh, what they do and always thinking, stopping to ask yourself, what are they doing and do I care? If they're doing something you don't care about, leave them alone. If they're causing a problem, then, uh, you know, get medieval. <laughs> so, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGuardian.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.